In this tutorial, we will learn how to create a scatter plot, which is a type of data visualization display in R. Now, a scatter plot is useful for plotting, particularly when we're doing a bivariate scatter plot, which is what we'll be doing in this tutorial. It's useful for plotting two continuous variables, or in other words, variables that are on the interval and or, or, or ratio measurement scale. And sometimes we let it slide, as we'll do in this case, looking at a variable that's on the ordinal scale and plotting it in a scatter plot. Now, you could also do a univariate scatter plot. And this is simply if you just look at the spread of scores for a single variable. Now, in this case, plotting a bivariate scatter plot can be useful for testing a couple of the statistical assumptions underlying or that need to be met for a Pearson product moment correlation, namely that they you have a bivariate normal distribution, as well as that the relationship appears to be linear in nature as a Pearson product moment correlation is appropriate if you suspect there's a linear relationship as it tests the strength and direction of a linear relationship. And then finally, you can use a bivariate scatter plot as we'll do in this case to identify if there looks like there are any bivariate outliers that you might need to handle, remove, or clean the data further um, in that case. OK, so let's, as I mentioned, we're going to be running and creating a scatter plot using R. And so let's first go to File, New File, R script, open up our R script file. Again, we're going to create um, a scatter plot in R. And we'll do a couple different functions, one from base R called plot, and one called the scatter plot function from less R. Now, before we do that, we need to make sure we set our working directory. And so to do that, make sure that you've either used the setwd function and set the exact name of your, your uh, pathway to your working directory folder, which again is that folder that contains the data that you'd like to read in ultimately and work with. And so mine is my H drive R workshop folder because I know this is where the data I have reside. Alternatively, you could go to session, set working directory, and choose directory to manually set that. OK, so I'm going to run this line of script here to set my working directory. I can see down here in the console that it worked. The next thing that I'm going to do is read in the data. Now, I'm going to use the read underscore CSV function from the reader package. You could use another function, if you'd like, from another package or from Basar. And so, First, I need to make sure that I, if I haven't already, use the install.packages function to install the reader function, especially if I need to update it. I know I've already done this, so I'm not going to run this line of script in this tutorial, but you should if you haven't installed the reader package or if you haven't done so recently or you haven't updated it recently. I am going to use the library function from Basar and type in reader because I know it's already installed and use reader as the sole argument here to say, let's access the functions within that package. I'm going to click run on that line. And now I'm ready to read in my data frame object. I'm going to call this data frame object PM data. This is arbitrary, but this just stands for performance management data because some of the data we're going to be looking at correspond to performance management data. So very appropriately named in this case. And I'll use the left-handed arrow symbol to name the data frame. And then do read underscore CSV is the name of the function from the reader package I wish to use. And then I need to type in the exact name of the file with the .csv extension in the quotation marks as the sole argument within this read underscore CSV function. So what is the name of the file I'm working with today? Well, I'm going to go. Here is my working directory folder that I've set, my H drive R workshop. It'll likely be different for you. And I'm going to click here so I can copy the exact name of this file, this performance management reward systems example, paste in between the quotation marks here, and do .csv extension at the end to indicate that it, this is a comma separated values file or a .csv. Now let's click run. And here you'll see that I have read in the data here. And it appears as a data frame object called PM data that I named in my global environment. And here to orient you to the data, we have 11 variables. The first one is a unique identifier for the employees. And then we have four, let's assume these are supervisor rated or performance evaluation categories or dimensions. You have performance quality, performance productivity dimension, performance effort dimension, and the performance administrative task dimension here. Range, let's say, from one to five that we can see here. This is an ordinal scale, but we're going to treat it just for the sake 
of explanation here. And as is often consistent in the social sciences and working with human data, we're gonna pretend that there are equal intervals and treat this as an interval ratio scale here and instead of an ordinal measurement scale here. So let's interpret one as being low performance on that dimension and five being very high. Now we have the sales revenue generated here. Let's assume that this is more of these. These are subjective indicators of performance, these performance evaluation ratings that all begin with perf underscore. Sales revenue, let's assume this is more of an objective indicator of sales performance for these employees here. And then we have their base pay, variable pay, sex, age, and education level. Education level is another ordinal variable where one is low education, five is high. Okay, so now that we have the data read in and we've oriented ourselves to it, Let's make sure that we have saved our R script file. So let's get a file, save as, just to make sure we're saving our work here. I'm gonna call mine test here, click save. This will override, override an existing file, which I'm okay with in this instance. And now I'm ready to proceed forward to create, uh, let's do a scatter plot using plot function from base R. Okay, so the plot function from base R is just P-L-O-T, plot, all lowercase. Now, the way that we write the arguments for this, this particular function is pretty straightforward. We first need to specify the name of a data frame that a variable belongs to, or both of our variables belong to in this case. So we've got PM data, dollar sign, and then followed immediately by the name of a variable that we wish to plot on the x-axis. So in this case, let's plot the perform perf underscore prod, the productivity variable here, because let's say we suspect that it is associated with, um, or we expect it to have a, a linear relationship, or maybe we just want to understand whether it has a linear relationship with another variable. So perf underscore prod with a capital P's for both words. That's our first argument, enter a comma, and after our, to separate the arguments here, and then we'll type the name of the data frame again followed by dollar sign, and then the name of the second variable, which will appear on the y-axis. And this time we wanna put sales revenue, let's say. We wanna understand if supervisor rated employee productivity is associated with sales revenue here. Okay, the sales revenue that employee generates. So in other words, we're trying to see, you would expect there to be a positive relationship between an, a subjective measure of productivity and an, a more objective measure of productivity. Okay, so these are the only two arguments that we need to enter here. And I'm gonna open up my plot window here a little bit bigger. And I'm gonna hit run here on this line of script. And so this will often look a little bit cleaner. I have this view blown up here so that you can see it. But what you can kind of see here, and this is where you have the ordinal performance variable. So you see these spaces in between. It's not really a continuous variable here, but we do see this upward trend here. And you can kind of begin to see this bivariate normal distribution here in terms of the shape. This appears to be somewhat of a linear upward relationship that we're seeing here. And it's I don't see anything that's noticeably an outlier here. Now, the next thing I wanna do is show you, well, let's actually get a variable that's more continuous in nature that we can plot here um, on the x-axis, and, axis. and so this is an opportunity to practice internal consistency reliability. And so specifically, internal consistency reliability is the idea that you that variables, multiple variables, actually have some, the extent to which they're consistent with one another and should be treated as essentially part of a whole, for instance. And this is often used, internal consistency reliability is often estimated, and specifically using the alpha function or the um, uh, specifically Al Chromebooks alpha, and we can use the alpha function from the psych package here to estimate that level of internal consistency reliability, as this is a way to justify creating an overall scale score, an overall score, for instance, um, for a set of variables. And by overall score, I mean usually computing the average for each case along those sets of variables. Now let's assume in this case that we wanna know if these different performance dimensions actually potentially represent the are consistent with one another, so we could potentially use them to represent overall supervisor rated performance as opposed to just looking at them piecemeal. What this will do also, by taking the average, it'll give us more of a continuous measure here. Okay, so how do we do this? Well, we are going to, if you haven't already, and if you want more information on this, I'm gonna move pretty quickly through this, check out the internal consistency reliability in R tutorial for more information on how this to actually run this and interpret this. But let's do install.packages, the name of the, the package is psych, where the alpha function we're about to use comes from. 
I've recently installed this. I'm not gonna run this line of script, but you might need to. The next function is the library function from base R. I'm gonna, as the sole argument, the name of the package, which is psych, I'm gonna click run. Okay, so the name of the function I'm interested in is alpha, which is a function used to estimate Chrome box alpha, which is an indicator of internal consistency reliability. Now, this is a little bit trickier to specify the arguments in this function, but bear with me here. And again, I'm gonna move quickly, but if you have more questions, check out that internal consistency, consistency and rely, internal consistency reliability tutorial um, that focuses on how to do this in R. Okay, so the name of our data frame is PM data. And then we need to use the bracket symbol here and put a comma here, okay? Because we want to indicate that we want to reference columns here, which contain our variable names. So after that, use the C function, which is our combined function, and then list the names of the variables in quotation marks and separated by commas that you wish to assess the internal consistency of. And so if we look over here, we see we have perf qual, perf proc, perf effort, and perf admin, okay? So I'm gonna type those in and make sure they are case and space sensitive. So make sure those are entered correctly. And so there's perf prod and I've noticed I'm using commas to separate each one of these arguments. And then I have perf effort. And then I'm gonna do a comma and do our enter so I can go down a line here so I don't run out of space there. And then I will enter perf admin is the final dimension here. Okay, so these are the different variables that we wish to assess their internal consistency. Okay, so let's highlight, click run. Okay, so let's look down and quickly we'll work through the output here. We see our raw alpha and our standardized alpha are both, both 0.94 and this is actually nearly excellent internal consistency reliability. So this is quite good actually. And if we look down at the table that says reliability if an item is dropped, we'll see that yeah, actually if we drop any one of these items, the alpha would fall from 0.94 to something lower. So this is suggesting that as long as we have conceptual idea that these should be related to each other, there's no evidence that we should drop any of these before creating an overall perform supervisor rated performance variable. Okay, so that brings me to the next step. So we have justification to create an overall variable here that represents supervisor rated performance. And so we need to create a new variable. And so let's first type in the name of the data frame that we wish to add this new variable to and come up with a name for it. Let's call this new variable overall perf, overall underscore perf with a capital O and a capital P. You could call it whatever you like. And we use the dollar sign there to say it's gonna be attached to the existing data frame. Now we'll use the arrow, left-handed arrow to note that we're going to create this new variable or vector and add it to the existing data frame. And we're going to use the row means function from base R, which has a capital M in it. And within the parentheses, actually, we can start borrowing from the way the argument that's presented here in the alpha function. So copy everything between the outermost parentheses here, and then just paste into row means. And what you'll see here is that now our cursor is hovering right before the final parenthesis. So let's add a second argument here and just let's make that na.rm equals true. And this basically means that in the case that uh, is just to say if there is missing data that um, go ahead and remove those. So here we have the script here. Mine spills over to two lines. Yours might be on a second. Uh, yours might be on a single line here, but we're going to use the row means function to calculate the overall performance for each person based on their scores on these four dimensions. And we'll call this new variable overall underscore perf. So let's click run. Now let's go to our global environment hit here, click on the name of our data frame, scroll all the way over. And now we have this new variable. And you see how now this is more continuous in nature. Instead of just having dis, uh, interval levels or discrete values of one, two, three, four, and five, now we have 3.25, one, 1 1.25, and so forth. Okay, so let's rerun the plot function that we did above. And so specifically, let's just copy this one to start from. So copy this line here with the plot function from base R. Let's paste it here. And so instead of this first variable being perf underscore prod for the productivity dimension, let's now use the name by copying overall underscore perf there and pasting it here, the name of this new variable. So this will be on our x-axis now. And let's go ahead and run this line here. 
Okay, so take a look at your plots window here. And now we get a little bit more of a um, bit of continuity here, a continuation, continuous nature between for this x-axis variable here. And again, you can kind of see that ellipse shape, that football shape, it's a, it seems to be a positive linear relationship. And we don't, I don't really see anything that's noticeably a bivariate outlier here. Okay, so the next thing that we want to do is let's create a scatter plot. And actually, before we do that, let me just add one other thing. You can, if you copy this or leather, let's just use the existing line of script here for this plot function we just wrote here. You can also add X uh, axis labels using the X lab argument. So let's say overall perf, uh, overall perf, and I'll abbreviate that for space, do a comma, add the next argument. Let's do Y lab, which stands for Y axis label. And let's say that's sales revenue. And let's put in parentheses there dollars to say that it's US dollars. Okay, so let's go ahead and run that function there and update. And now you see we have more meaningful X and Y axis labels there. So you can also do that with that plot function from base R. But now let's create a scatter plot using the scatter plot function from uh, less R. And notice it's scatter plot with a capital S and a capital P. Okay, so if you haven't already, make sure that you have installed less R. And to do so, use the install.packages and put less R with a capital R in the quotation marks within the parenthesis. And then you would run that and click update. And let's go ahead, actually, I'm gonna do that. Click run, click update. It asked me if I wanted to restart R, that's fine. It does that in the background here. And so it's installing and updating less R right here. Okay, now we need to use the library function here. And I'm gonna do library with less R as the sole argument here, with the exact name of the package there and click run. And now you see that we have successfully accessed the less R package. Now we're ready to use the scatter plot function with a capital S and a capital P. And as the first argument, we're going to put in, let's put in the overall perf variable. And notice we don't need to specify here using the dollar sign, the name of the variable, or the name of the data frame that corresponds to each variable. Instead, we'll be able to use an argument called data equals to specify the name of the data frame later in the function. So as our second argument, let's do sales revenue as our, this is going to be our y-axis variable, whereas the first one list is, is our x-axis variable and then data equals and the name of the the third argument being data equals and the name of the data frame from which these two variables come from okay and so now let's click run and you'll see here is the scatter plot for these two variables it looks fairly similar, a little bit different instead of circles. We have little diamonds here that you can see. But again, we see this mostly linear relationship. Looks like a pretty good ellipse um, here in terms of evidence of bivariate normal distribution. Now, we can also add an additional argument by doing comma and click return here. And I'm going to set ellipse. This is all lowercase. Ellipse is equal to true. And so this will superimpose an ellipse over our scatter plot here. So let's run these two lines. Okay, and so now you see this nice ellipse. So this gives us a good idea of kind of the shape of the direct of the distribution, the direction it's in. And you know, yeah, some of these you might consider outliers, but these don't look like too bad of bivariate outliers here. These look like they're within the range of reasonable values here. And notice too that in our output down here, for the scatter plot, we actually get text output, and it automatically estimates the Pearson product moment correlation here, or the sample correlation. And so we get that as well as the p-value associated with that correlation and the 95% lower and upper confidence interval bounds here, okay? So there's quite a bit packed into this particular function here. Now, if you wanna know about additional arguments you can add to the scatter plot function from less r, do question mark scatter plot, make sure you put the exact name of the function with a which has a capital S and a capital P and click run. And here in our help window, we will see that it's part of the plot function here, regular plot function. And so what are the arguments you can use? Well, you can scroll through and see there's tons of them. And so just like you did above with the X label, X axis label, which is X lab equals and the Y axis label, which is 
ylad equals, you can add these arguments. In fact, let's do that. Let's just copy these from above. This is from the plot function we previously did. Let's copy those two arguments. And let's just do comma and then paste in those arguments and watch what happens. So let's now run the, the, the scatterplot function again with those arguments. And now we've replaced those different variable or access labels with ones that are a little bit more descriptive here. And if you use, this is beyond the scope of this tutorial, but if you use the style function from Lessar, there's, and you can check out more about this if you do question mark style, stall style lowercase and run that, you will see that there's a number of different styles you could set. So you can, for instance, change the color of the, the plot here, remove the grid lines, um, do a number of different things here to make this more aesthetic. Uh, aesthetically pleasing, and you can also export this. You could also export what we did previously with the plot function using basar, and you can save this to your clipboard or save it as an image or a PDF. Okay, so this wraps up the tutorial on scatterplot using R.